Welcome back to the Swim Swim Breakdown. As always, I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Uh, coming to you from Austin, Texas, we are joined by Swim Swim Editor-in-Chief Braden Keith from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Senior International Reporter Loretta Race in Kentucky. And as you can see, we have all got the holiday spirit on this episode. <laughs> Guys, we haven't all been together in like months. <laughs> it has been a very long time. Yes. This it's is been the a while. Original breakdown crew. <laughs> it's the breakdown to crew just in time for the holidays. Yeah. We don't need no stinking Tom Shields. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Tom will be back in the new year. <laughs> Uh, so this episode is mostly going to be about short course worlds. Let's be real. It was, it was a heck of a six day meet. There was, I was surprised. <laughs> there was, there was a lot of really great swims at this meet. So let's just start. Give me your race of the meet. Uh, first of all, I'm going to say that this was probably the best short course worlds I can remember. It's certainly the best since Lochte did his crazy 2012 when he won a bunch of gold medals. Maybe Myra Belmonte was at that meet too, but it's it's the best one in at least a decade. Um, so that was fun to see. It's it feels like we've sort of been missing something like that um, globally for a while. So. That was good. Um, for me, the answer is obvious. It's the men's 400 medley relay, you know, with Italy coming in um, without Thomas Chacon on the backstroke leg, still <clears> taking <throat> a big lead, um, having Moresi on the anchor, having Moresi. It, it wasn't just like the Americans and the Australians ran him down. It was that he broke out to the front and then they ran him down. That made it so exciting for me. Um, Kieran Smith doing sprinter things, even though he's not a sprinter, Kyle Chalmers doing video game times. I, th this race just had so many good things that featured so many of the stars of the meet, you know, Isaac Cooper, who had a big, big breakout meet, Nick Fink, who is becoming everybody's favorite new American swimmer. Um, there were just so many good things in this race. The only thing that could have made it better is if somebody won by 0 0.01 seconds instead of the tie, but Maybe the tie was the right way to end that meet anyway. I'm going with actually a non-world record race only because it was close to a world record. <laughs> the men's 200 free because so Wing Sungwoo of South Korea almost, okay, got Paul Biederman's uh, record. That's from what, 2009. Okay. So Biederman's 139.37, Wing Sungwoo won in 13972. So definitely less than half a second. But for me, it's just significant that we saw, obviously, Popovich um, win the 200 free long course. Okay. And so I feel like we're finally seeing, like, real true progress in the 200 free for a very long time. Like, no one's been under 140 in short course since, I think, Agnell in 2012. So that's, like, a decade for somebody to go under 140. And Wing did it with a broken finger, people. He broke it in, okay, I think it was the finish of the semifinal in the morning or or the previous day. And so he basically just swam with like four, four on one hand and five on, you know what I mean? That's crazy for him to get that close to a world record. I, that was my swim in the meet just for that. If you didn't have that broken finger, maybe Biederman's record would have fallen. Who knows? Did you guys read Daniel Takata's article from, I don't know, when was it? November <laughs> about the 200 frees. It's just, it's wild the way he graphed it where, so we're looking at sub 145.00. So 144.99 or better 200 freestyles. In 2009, there were five, 2010, there were one, 2011, there were six. And we didn't get back to six again until last year when we had eight. Mm. Um, and this, this event, this was the marquee event, right? The race of the century with Phelps and Thorpe and, um Hogan Bond and whoever else was in that that race of the century this was the race um and then it's like I everybody stopped caring about it and I sort of have a theory about why like I think there was a style of training that we were all using in the early 2000s that developed really good 200 freestylers every it made everybody <laughs> good at the 200 free and it was that kind of not necessarily huge yardage, but higher yardage threshold training, not a lot of race pace, just kind of pushing, but not sprinting through workouts at, you know, I, I think about for me, it was seven to 9,000 yards of workout. And for other better swimmers, it was probably more. 
Um, and I think that produced just really good middle distance freestylers. I think every coach wanted everybody to be a 200, 500 freestyler then. Um, and then we went to more people were doing kind of race pace stuff. And it took us a while to figure out how to swim middle distance freestyle in the context of race, more race pace training. Um, but I think we figured it out again and, I don't know. I, I was shocked at how close he got to that world record. So that- well, also he, so he repeated as a world champion. He won the title last year. His winning time last year was one forty one sixty. So, I mean, that's a huge disparity just in a year's worth. So he's definitely figuring something out. So I think that bodes really well for long course world championships and then eventually Paris. So. And yeah. that's exciting, right? Cause then we have the rivalry with Popovich in long course coming. Cause Wong is a good long course swimmer too. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. that makes the Popovich story even better. Right. And today Popovich even posted on his Instagram, <clears throat> gave a little context of how he was feeling insecure heading into this meet. He had doubts of his short course abilities. He came out stronger. He broke a world junior record and then got a silver medal. And so, you know, both these swimmers are leaving w- w- with confidence going into the long course season, which should make it all the, all the better. Uh, and you've got the uh, Olympic champion, champion tom dean in there for third as well who's like very much still in the running um yeah it should be a a good a good rivalry a good summer plus you have the four men's four by two world record just get demolished uh with 41 0 40.4 41 4 41 1 it seems like everyone's kind of figuring out this middle distance thing little by little as well my race of the meet was Maggie McNeil's hundred fly just because of the body of work she put together at this meet. Uh, she ties for gold in the 50 fly. She sets a world record and wins the 50 back. And then at the very end of the meet, she breaks a world record in the hundred fly 54. Oh, three golds, three bronzes on Canada's relays. Uh, and now it's not simultaneous like Kaylee McEwen with the Olympic champ, long course world champ, short course world champ and Commonwealth games champ. But she has all of those titles and three of the four are the most current. They can be the, the long course world title being from 2019. So it's like, you know, just another tick in her, uh, exceedingly impressive resume net right now. I will say the men's four by one medley is the only race that has ever dropped my jaw involuntarily. Yeah. Uh, watching that race was bananas. You're saying that, uh, right? <laughs> uh, did short course worlds change our opinions at all about the women's 100 fly at NCAA's and who's going to win that with the the Tori Huss, Kate Douglas, Maggie McNeil? I mean, they all swam really well, right? They, I mean, they were like they were all on fire this morning. Right. I mean, I think it's going to be the race of NCAA's on the women's side, yeah. especially if they can all you know, be firing on all cylinders like they were in Melbourne because it was just nuts how all of them, how well all three of those women did. I feel I'm feeling Maggie's on fire. Like, I think I've I've got to pick her at this point. But that's like kiss of death, right? As soon as I say that, Kate Douglas <laughs> is going to go out and drop a 48 in a dual meet and, and we'll all have to start picking Kate again. Just don't put Maggie's picture on the article for, you know, previewing the women's hunter fly for NCAA. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it, to me, it's like a coin toss, right? Because Kate and Maggie also swim really well in season. And Tori is the, the, the Stanford poster child of like, she rests and then she does really well, but she kind of keeps her cards closer to the chest in season. And they all are have incredible underwaters. Um, I don't know if I can pick one right now. <laughs> it's just going to be so good. This this meet was not without controversy, though. Uh, most of that's part her, of what made it good, right? That's part of what made it great. I, I think. don't know about Isaac Cooper if he would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the foremost situation being um, that men's fifty backstroke where there was a, a timing error, something. I'm going to call it the fifty back starting debacle. Um, where the starter, there, there was the beep to go, and then there was the second beep that usually signals um, that the swimmers should stop. Five of them didn't, three of them did. Uh, then they opted to re swim the 50 back race later in the session. 
Isaac Cooper, 2249 in the original race, set the world junior record. He got second to Ryan Murphy in the re-swim, so was officially the silver medalist. Do you think this was handled in the right way, given the circumstances? Do we know if the times from the first race are going to count? Not to my knowledge. I don't yeah, I don't I think so. I'm sure they're not. <laughs> um, Cal Golden Bears and their re-swims in the backstrokes, right? Uh, this this it seems to be a bigger problem in backstroke races than other races, though it's usually for the the starting wedge failure. Those things yeah. are apparently not peak engineering yet. Um, you know, Daniel Carr NCAA's is the reference. This is the Dave Durden sliding to his butt after he makes the A final, getting his re swim. It's a great video. Go watch it. It's on our YouTube. Um, you know, it's it's. It's classic swimming, right? We don't come up with rules to address things until after they happen, even when they're sort of obvious and inevitable. Um, there was no correct outcome to this, right? Like the only correct outcome is to fix it for the future. And to me, the most obvious way to do that is to reinstall the um, the mid pool rope. But, you know, there's probably more technological ways to do it. You can probably put a strobe light or something at the bottom of the pool that just, or I guess in backstroke at the you know, on the ceiling, something that flashes at them. Um, there's got to be a way to signal the swimmers. Maybe, maybe with the new technology rules, maybe the one piece of um, feedback that they can get is a recall on a DQ. But there's got to be a way to solve this with technology. I think given the circumstance what choice did they have? You know, they couldn't, they couldn't add a world, world championship. I mean, thank God it's not like a 400 IM, right? Yeah. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah. It's like, well, and there was no opportunity to stop them, right? If it was a 400 IM, they probably would have stopped them, found a way to stop them. Um, but officials you know, just diving into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't throw a traffic cone. We already learned that's the wrong thing to do. Um, <laughs> You know, what What are they going to do? They can't have five swimmers stop. It's it's a malfunction. If if they don't re-swim it, those five swimmers protest and probably get their way. Um, so they wind up re-swimming it anyways. Benefit Ryan Murphy. We already know he's really good at backstroke skins, right? Um, and this wasn't this wasn't quite the skins environment per se because, um, you know, they weren't back-to-back. I think they had a 45-minute break before the re-swim, yeah. something like that. So I think... I think this is a situation where they solved it as best they could. Um, you know, the fail, the, by the time the, the error happened, the failure was already there and, and it's a sunk cost and you have to go forward the best way you can. And at that point they went forward the best way that they can, but they really need to not let it happen again. And I think that's the key. Yeah, I totally agree. They, they had to re-swim it. Obviously you had, three out of the five, three out of the, the finalists didn't even proceed with the race. So there was no way that you could just let it continue. But I mean, really, like you said, okay, maybe there's something more technically advanced to, to stop the swimmers, but until that time they should just put the rope in. Cause then maybe yeah. they could have prevented them from turning at the wall. Yeah. You know, they could have stopped them. So Although that's all of us summer league coaches have had the experience where the, the kids just swim through the rope. Right. Right. <laughs> well, I think it was Isaac was like, I think he said he heard, like right. the yeah the the you know messed up beat but he was like hey this is world championships so i'm not stopping for anything you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. You, you can't blame obviously the people for for continuing the race and murphy did say afterwards <laughs> you know he felt bad for cooper you know what is he 18 19 yeah i mean whether it was a pr spin or whatever he basically said you know good on him for you know getting the world junior record unofficially in the in the first 50 and you know his bright future ahead of him that career you know kind of speak so but i mean I think they, like you said, did the best that they could. They had to re-swim it, so. It's always easier to be the good sport when you benefit from the, yeah. the redo. <laughs> exactly. um, but it's also just short course world, so, you know, I, it's it's not like it was an Olympic final, right? Yeah. You're thinking Taewon Park got the re-swim in the Olympic, or Park Taewon got the re-swim in the Olympics with the, the starter malfunction. It's... And that that elicited a little more emotion from people. Um, when was that? Two thousand eight, I think. No, it was later than that. I think it was. was it? it was either London or Rio. Um, okay. Yeah, it was a, his prelim swim. It must have been the four hundred because I think it was for a direct spot to finals. It must have been London. Um. Yeah, I don't remember. 
Um, but regardless, like that was a lot more <laughs> heated than this because there was there's a lot more on the line there. Right. Yeah, I think our uh well, in as in most situations, I think our commenters could have handled the situation better in terms of uh, you know, Isaac Cooper was on the podium after he got off the podium, you know, he started crying, he showed some emotion cuz he was upset which I think is fine. It's an upsetting situation. He's an 18 year old kid. And they were like, Oh, this is so disrespectful. It's like, what? (laughs) No, it's not. He's, he's being a human being. Uh, you know, I, I think it's understandable that he at first, you know, won a world title and then didn't. And that's upsetting. Uh, I think for him, especially because he got sent home from Commonwealth games. So we didn't have a chance to medal there. So this was like his shiny moment, you know, of 2022. So I think it had a little bit more of an impact for his particular case. Just yeah. Yeah. I love the emotion, man. You know, like if he's, if he's a month later and he's still crying and angry about it, um, that's a different situation. But in the immediate aftermath, let that emotion flow. It was 2012 with Park in the 400 free. He was DQ'd in prelims and then they reviewed and said there was an extra noise and he got a reswim. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let let the emotions flow. The, you know, the good news for him is that after what happened with Commonwealth Games where he was sent home for misusing prescription drugs, um, the, they've got him with therapists and all kind of other people. So he's going to work through those emotions and I assume come back stronger. He had a great meet. This was, this was Isaac Cooper's coming out meet, you know, his, Hey, I'm not just the guy who got sent home from the Commonwealth games anymore. Meet. Um, he's only 18 or 18. I think he's still 18. Um, he's only 18. So he, he's, he, he made his name regardless. People know who Isaac Cooper is now. So speaking of of uh, coming out or coming back parties, uh, we had a few of these storylines at this meet. Uh, Chad Leclo 2.0 was on full display, winning world titles in the hundred and two hundred fly. As was Diaceto, who you know had a rough Olympics and and has since kind of won medals. He obviously won the four IM at the two thousand twenty one short course worlds. He won a medal or two in, in uh, Budapest last summer, but you know, th- this meet, he wins 200 breasts. He wins 400 IM. He medals in two fly. Whose comeback do you think was more impressive, uh, from compared to their 2021 Olympic performance, Chad, Chad or Daya? Chad Leclo, a hundred percent. Um, to me, Daya, Daya's sinking was sort of potential unfulfilled you know it was kind of disappointing we thought maybe he'd make, he'd get that 4 a.m world record in long course the the legendary record and um so him coming back just seems like him kind of being back on form with chad i think most people assumed he was just on that slow decline at the end of a career <laughs> um was going to be a good isl swimmer but like his time on big big podiums was done um Although his his Olympic 200 fly is our most watched TikTok video ever, so he'll always have that to hang his hat on. <laughs> um, what, the the semifinal where he goes out and he's like half a pool ahead of everybody and then dies. Um, but no, I, I think it's totally Chad. I think it's a better story. He made he made the coaching change and it's working. It's obviously working. Diaz feels like sort of the conclusion of his first act, whereas Chad's feels like sort of a second act of his career, sort of a, a true revival, a, a, a second part to the story when the whole world thought he was done and he's showing he's not done. He's got more in the tank. He, you know, he's not just the guy who beat Phelps when he was a teenager. He's going to be, uh, he's going to be a real dude. Okay. I first wrote down the clo, okay, because I totally agree with you and everything that you said, but okay. I think in Seto's case, okay, so he he had Matt Sates in the 4 a.m. Like he had the big guns out after him. Like Leclo didn't have Tomorrow Honda, didn't have Christoph Milak. Okay. And yeah, he still put up good times for himself. I think his two five was even a career best. So so his in his own right, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So he in his own right, he definitely, you know, swam lights out. But I feel like maybe his podium placements wouldn't have been there had the entire field been there for him. Whereas Seto, okay, he didn't have Zach Stevely Cook, who's not tremendous in short course, but he didn't have him in the two breast. Um, no but Marchand. He still... hmm? No Leon Marchand. Yeah, okay, okay. So 
Okay, but still, it's settle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. I mean, Carson Foster was there, right? Right. So, right. so Seto had to beat somebody really good. Who did Chad beat in the hundred, two hundred fly? Uh, oh, well, Seto got silver in the two fly. Let's see. Um, in the two fly, it was Seto, and then Noe Ponti. And then uh-huh. in the one fly, it was Ilya Karun and Marius Kush. Yeah. And again, Ilya but... Karun has has all the potential in the world, but he's <clears> not <throat> Caleb Dressel. He's not I don't know, whoever else swims the 100 fly these days. Um, yeah. I mean, so no luck. Know, but, but yeah. Seto's 200 breast was, was within, it, it was, I think it was 0.19 off of Kirill Pagoda's world record. I mean, so that, that was yeah. a huge bust busting out swim in the 200 breast, which isn't like an off event. Obviously he has the, he had the Japanese national record. So it wasn't like a totally off event, but it's, it's not his prime event. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he was able to get that close to a world record, I don't know. Again, that pushes the argument in his favor for me. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're convincing me that, that his comeback was better than I thought it was on first glance. Although daddy Chad beating daddy Daya. (laughs) Chad doesn't have (laughs) any kids. (laughs) <laughs> do you have to have kids to be a daddy <laughs> not in this day and age <laughs> don't, are, um, don't the women who women who run the call me daddy podcast aren't they women Is yeah that a, yeah that's i don't know that that's, that's correct yeah. i only watch call. swimming podcasts like ours so I'm <laughs> <Mark. Mark. laughs> the correct answer that's our news discussion for the week now we're going to turn it to some sink or swim for more worlds talk Keeping it with Chad LeClo, he publicly stated that he is going for Ryan Lochte's all-time short course world titles record, which is 14. In 2024, Chad got his 11th and 12th title in those aforementioned 100 and 200 fly wins. Do you think Chad will tie and or break Lochte's all-time individual titles record? He's not going to break it. Um as good as this resurgence is, it would take him till 2026 at least to break it. And I think by then it will be too, a, a, a toss too far. So I don't think he's going to break it. Um, okay. I think a tie is possible because the next short course worlds are the post Olympic short course worlds. And I think in 2024, after the Olympics, we're going to see very few swimmers at this meet. I, you know, I think it's going to be like, less worse than last year um because i think i think that taking six months off after the olympics is going to become the new norm um Mm -hmm. so i think there could be kind of a dead period after 2024 which could allow him to win two more it is going to be in budapest uh, if for what it's worth yeah that's true um i'm gonna sink it i think i think a tie is plausible but i don't think it's more likely than not so i'm gonna sink it yeah, I'm thinking it too, just for the probability factor. I mean, because basically, unless he adds like the 200 free or like some other event, you know, it's like the 50 Santos isn't going to be there, you know, next time, but there's so many other good 50 flyers. So it's like, like that's not a shoe in. Even the 100 and 200 fly, you know, even next year isn't a shoe in for him. So I think it's just, I don't know. I'm thinking it for, for Luclo. Coleman, you know what you got to do. <laughs> You know, he was, uh, let's see, he was 0.17 away from silver in the 50 fly. Uh, and like, again, Santos isn't going to be there. Great. I'll swim it. I'll, I think he can win two of the three butterfly titles next time around in two years. I don't think his underwaters are going to decline that much. Uh, and he but did. Honda's world record is 146. And Chad is at 148 now. So if yeah, Honda's, Honda's not going to swim. Huh? Yeah, I mean, well, I don't, you know, I, again, he, Chad beat everyone in his events by like so much. Like he won the 100 by half a second. He won the 100 by a full second, or sorry, 200 by a full second. Like I, he, we know he's really good at the 50 fly. I think he has enough short course prowess to hang on for two years and get two more wins. Okay, I'm changing my prediction. I think Chad LeClo bypasses the Olympics to focus on 2024 short course worlds. And it's not it. a bad strategy, honestly. 
Mm-hmm. Or he could just though. like, you know, That's he could just grand. go to the he could just go to the Olympics to go, you know, just like yeah. not true, like true. Yeah. Chad, if you're listening, don't do that strategy. <laughs> <laughs> but if you that- do, please reveal that strategy publicly. <laughs> That we can all discuss. I'm uh that. I think I'm talking to Chad soon, so I'll ask him. So. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'll I'll suggest it. I'll yeah. just slide it in there. <laughs> <laughs> we had some historic uh events happen, two of which uh mentioned earlier McEwen's quadruple crown of now she is short course world champion, long course world champion, Olympic champion, and Commonwealth champion, all reigning, all current. Uh and Ryan Murphy had the first ever men's backstroke sweep. I, is is that the first ever like sweep no. of a stroke by a man? Okay. Uh, I I helped Riley make the list, so I'm pulling it up right now. I thought okay. it was the first ever sweep of any stroke at one World Championships. Nope. Um, Katinka Hoshu uh, Hoshu has done it. Ryan Lochte swept the IMs in 2010 and 2012. Um. Katinka got it, the IMs in 2016, 2018. That doesn't count. We're talking three, three events, not just There the are three IMs at Short Course World. Oh, maybe. yeah, there are. Shoot. <laughs> um, Masami <laughs> Tanaka tripled in the women's breaststrokes in 1999. There were a surprising number of people who <laughs> won the 50 and the 200, but not the 100. Um, really funny. Yeah, I know Nick like, Fink did in Nick last Fink year. Did that, that last year, and there were there were a couple other examples of that, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but we found three other short course world sweeps. Okay. Um, wow. I, I that may be a giveaway, but I'm going to go Murphy just because, like, um, you know, em, what Emma did is impressive. It's a little bit of a funny function of timing, right? Um, yeah. You know, with 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 COVID compressing things, I think that makes doing that a little bit easier. Um, you know, having a long course worlds and short in a Commonwealth Games in the same year and a short course worlds for that matter, all in the same year helps a lot with that sort of thing. Um, but to me, when you look at Ryan Murphy and who's done it before. Uh, and it's in its Katinka and it's Ryan Lochte and it's them in short course. To me, that that puts your name among some real giants who have done something kind of incredible. Um, so I'm going to take Murphy by a hair. You know, I think we we always have to look at the context of the Commonwealth sprinters aren't that great. So winning the Commonwealth Games for her wasn't a massive challenge. Um Meanwhile, probably the two best other backstrokers in the world were both not able to be at this meet because Russia is suspended. So like there, you know, there's caveats to both of them um, that keeps either of them from being a perfect scenario. But to me, if you land among Ryan Lochte and Katinka Hozu in short course meters, that's something really special. So I agree with you that it's super duper special, but he did have the whole snafu with the 50 back. Okay. So okay. that yeah, kind yeah. of throws, you know, was he, was he not that? Yes, he was a gold medalist, but after like a redo kind of thing. Whereas McEwen, okay, like you just said, it was a compressed, you know, elite racing schedule. And she showed up to every meet, like several Aussies did not go to Commonwealth. You know, a lot of people didn't go to, you know, short course world. Like she went and swam at every single meet, which is kind of rare for an Australian. So for me, she gets like just double thumbs up for even showing up, let alone winning the same event at each, you know, of those competitions. So that gives her the big, the big edge for me over Ryan Murphy. Yeah. I think, I think while both are impressive, they both are probably at the bottom for various reasons of other people who have done similar things. Like when Ruta won world short course, world long course, world junior Olympic, Euro short course, (laughs) Euro junior, like all at the same time, like to me, that was way more impressive. Um, so that doesn't make them unimpressive, but I think in both cases, the other examples are probably more impressive. Right. Yeah. And I agree with that. Um, and I think Murphy's caveats are just a little bigger to me than McEwen's mostly because all the Russian backstrokers are, were not there and you had the 50 back snafu like, yeah, again, same as Loretta. Murphy's the world champion, no doubt about it. But, you know, it's like he he didn't swim the fastest time of the meet. So it's kind of like, eh. But, um, but like, you don't have the Russians there while McEwen, you know, Olympic champion, 
and world champion. Like those two, I think are big ones to be like, yeah, she beat everyone. Like she's the best and she proved it in all domains um, where obviously Murphy is too, but just the competition wasn't quite there at this meet, but I mean, seriously hats off. That's really impressive to get a sweep like that. Continuing with historic legacies. Diaceto, first man to ever six peat. I think in any at any meet in any event. Uh, if I'm wrong, yeah, please let us know. But he's won the 400 IM from 2012 to 2022. But like the 400 IM of all events, it's just yeah. Uh, oh God. The, he chose a nasty like, one. <laughs> yeah, and some of them were like pretty close, and some of them were not close at all. Uh, he, but you know, he's, he's gotten his hand on the wall first. Do you see anyone else six peating an event in the next 20 years at any major international meet? So perspective, his first one was in 2012 at age 18 and he's now 28. That's a decade. Um, you know, I'm impressed the, what Radislav Kovecki won three straight 200 backstrokes. And I think that's super impressive. I've got to sink it. Uh, there's the obvious, right? The obvious is that um, with everything in flux, the calendars in flux, what meets do and don't exist are in flux. <laughs> like the odds of there being six consecutive meets of anything in somebody's career is diminishing. Uh, but if we, you know, if we take it more on face value of just somebody doing it, like you think about all the great swimmers who who were great young and great old they all either missed it at a short course worlds or took a short course worlds off at some point in a decade. Nobody, I, I wonder how many people have swum at six straight world championship meets. You know, you even look at like Michael Phelps, right? He didn't swim at six straight world championship long course meets. Um, so to me, just like the consistency of that. And it's, it, if it's going to be anybody, it's going to be probably a Japanese swimmer because this is kind of what they're famous for this consistency um, over time with you're looking at Irie and, and other swimmers. Um, Kosuke or Kosuke, Kosuke, yeah. yeah. Hagino and Kitajima. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that, you know, maybe somebody will pop up, but like just the circumstance of getting to six straight short course world championships or long course world championships or whatever, and never taking a year off is, yeah. is mind blowing to me. What Dara Torres, I just pulled this stat up. She didn't swim at a world championship meet from 1982 to 2009 she only swam at two in her career the first one was in 1982 <laughs> the second yeah. one was in 2009 oh um God. and and when you look through history right like gary hall jr didn't swim at world championships like <laughs> it, we forget because when you start looking at metal records and metal counts and stuff you you sort of glaze over the individual circumstances and you know nobody was there telling the story at, at, at the time you forget that like most great swimmers throughout history skip a meet every once in a while. Um, and we still see that today. So I am sinking anybody doing that again. I hope he gets number seven. Yeah. I'm sinking it only because it's the probability factor that, you know, someone's not going to get injured or sick, or there could be another worldwide catastrophe that's going to postpone a meet or whatever. So I, I feel like just the odds are not there to back it up to say swim. So I'm sinking it. However, I do feel like, like David Popovich, you know, Summer McIntosh I, or McIntosh, I feel like they're so young, you know, it's possible. It's totally possible that, but basically the stars would have to align. They don't get ill. They don't get injured. And no meets ever get postponed for anything. <laughs> yeah. And I see summer as more of a possibility than David, just because the, the sprint freeze, more things can go wrong. You know, yeah. summer, if summer wants to win six straight 200 flies, she can probably overcome the, some little thing going wrong. Or four or four. I, if yeah. David wins six straight hundred freeze, he might surpass Michael Phelps. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. It's a long uh, time. <laughs> Summer, on the other hand, can't decide what her events are from one meet to the next <laughs> because the she's so good at everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, like first of all, I'm sinking because first of all, Commonwealth Games and Olympic Games, you can't even do that in the span of 20 years, <laughs> or I guess. I guess that would be exactly, I don't know. Yeah. It, that'd be really hard. We're not math what about like world <laughs> university games? 
perpetual student God. being college for 12 years. We would call that the Mike Alexandrov sweep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that I mean it's just it's so improbable. And yeah, there's there are some rising stars who have the possibility, but it's, it's just long course, especially it is hard to stay consistent. I think short course is much, it's probably easier to do, but again, people do not focus on short course worlds for a decade straight. And so we just, it just doesn't happen as much. Well, and, and you think about who, who are the two most dominant, um, individual swimmers, of this generation in the last in, in a specific event, I'm not talking about Phelps who was just great at everything. Mm -hmm. It's Katie Ledecky in the distance freeze and Adam Peaty in the sprint breaststrokes. Um, Katie Ledecky could do it next year in the 800 free. Um, Oh God, she's going to do it next year in the 800 free. We're, we're all wrong. Yeah. We, we were are. thinking about somebody who hadn't started yet, but she's <laughs> probably going to do it next year in the 800 free. Um, but you know, she can't do it in the 400 free. She can't do it in the 1500 free because she got sick. She's Katie Ledecky and nobody is in the same stratosphere as her in the distance freestyles. And she got sick one year. It happens. Um, but she's still going to win the 800 free because she was so much better than everybody else that she won the 800 free while she was on her deathbed. So. And so that she would have to swim at both world champ at 23 world championships and then the february 24 world championships 2013 2015 2017 2019 2022 2023 wow so she's gonna do it swim <laughs> swim <laughs> i'm swimming it uh I'm and adam Peavy can't do it because he wasn't at this world championships <laughs> last up uh, after this meet, 14 world records went down at this swim meet, which might be a record in itself. Uh, all the no, relays. It's not 2009 worlds. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Where, I like, wonder. 72 world records went down. <laughs> might be an unsuited record. <laughs> it yeah. might be a textile record. <laughs> so after this meet, four suited records in short course stand. Which do you think falls first? Therese Allsharmer's 50 fly. Rebecca Sony's 200 breast, Grant Hackett's 800 free, or Paul Biederman's 200 free. Okay, so to clarify, there were 43 world records <laughs> broken at the 2009 World Championships um, because so like uh, so many races, it was like Heat One broke the world record, Heat Two right, broke right, the world right. record. <laughs> uh, but back to the original question, um, I think Rebecca Sony's will be the long last to go down. I think Grant Hackett's 800 free will also be the last to go down. I think those two are going to survive <laughs> the longest um, in some order. It's, it's kind of surprising to me that nobody's gotten closer to Sony's 200 breasts because people have, have caught her in long course. Um, so Kate Douglas came really close uh, and she was what? Sorry, a second off. 1.2 yeah. off at this meet. And the number two performer and this is the the yulia yefimova world record that i think she broke <laughs> and was taken away for doping um so the closest anybody has been was evgenia chikanova in november 2022 <clears throat> so she's russian um so we don't know when we're going to see her again uh but she is young she's a young russian so maybe she'll get it okay i take it back it's grant hackett's 800 free um, I still think we're in a little bit of a deficit in the men's distance freestyles. I think, I think the prevailing wisdom at the moment is that if you are a distance freestyler, you just sort of bypass short course or any focus on short course. Um, like if you got a distance freestyler, like Roman Chuck who worked on his underwaters, I think that record was, would go down. I just don't think anybody's going to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I think Maggie's going to get. Alshamer's 50 fly in the next couple of years. And I think Wong's going to get Biederman's 200 free. Um, so among firsts, <clears throat> God, three, all but Hackett's are really kind of in danger, aren't they? Um, I think so. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Biederman's 200 free. 
I, I just think with the comeback of the two, the 200, I think it feels distant because of what we talked about earlier and kind of the global lull in the 200 free. Um, but I think with the comeback and, and what we've seen in the 200 yard free, what we've seen the, that those records be crushed. Um, I think it's due. See, I'm going totally the opposite, and I'm saying it's going to be Hackett's 800 free. Actually, is going to fall first. Why are okay. you always wrong? Oh, my gosh. Okay, because Daniel Whiffen of Ireland, little known swim because it was kind of overshadowed by Short Course Worlds, but he became the first Irishman to own a European record, and he set it in the 800 free. Okay, so his time, Short Course, 725.96. Yes, it's still over two seconds away from Grant Hackett's uh, 723.42. But the kicker with Whiffen is that this kid is totally kicking butt every single time he swims. And he's basically swimming against himself basically every time he swims. Okay. So about two weekends ago at Scottish Shore Course uh, Championships, he broke the 800 free uh, Irish record. It was 735.71. Okay. So basically in the span of like a week, he basically dropped like 10 seconds in this race. Okay. To get within two seconds of Hackett's. So I don't think it's that far. Two and a half seconds. Huh? Two and a half seconds. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm doing quick math here. Read a math. Okay. So basically <laughs> he, he literally only has that distance to go to, to Matt, to meet or exceed Hackett's record. And at the rate that he's exponentially dropping time, I think it's totally possible. He's only 21. He recently moved to Luff Loughborough where he trains. Obviously, that's working for him. So it is, Braden, going to be the 800 free. But how many guys have gotten within three seconds uh, of that record at a young age and have not gotten to it? So Roman Chuck in 2020 was 725. Um, how old was he in 2020? He was 24. That's a little older. Henrik Christensen went 725 in 2020. Um, I think that was that ISL test swim, if I, I recall so. correctly. Yeah. So that was a little a little funny. Um, <clears throat> Paul Trenary, nobody else has gotten 725. I mean, those are the 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 only three guys who have been under 726 besides Hackett. Yeah. But I mean, he Whiffen swims short course. He did Scottish short course. He did Irish short course. He does Bucks. Uh, British but do you University think he'll College. keep doing it now that he's kind of getting a little traction, getting a little big time? What's that? Do you think he'll keep doing short course now that he's kind of getting yeah. big time? Oh, I think so. I think so. I think he'll do I more think, than like we will. Do it yeah. for the vlogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Daniel Daniel does very good vlogs. He's like he the does. Irish Michael Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think that's not the best comparison. I but. I, I think he is is definitely excelling in short course, and I think it's he's going to see it benefit him in long course, which he's also you know making making good strides in. So. Why wasn't he at Worlds? Ireland Ireland didn't send a team. That's stupid. Fina would have paid for him to go for free. They what did they focus on? Uh, Commonwealths. Open. They did U.S. Open, and what was the other? He thing? got a medal at Com Games. Oh yeah, they they got yeah, silver they got games, but they the just they didn't go, they didn't send an official roster to short course worlds. I wish they would have done like Hungary and and taken their two free roster slots and <clears throat> rolled with it because he was obviously tapered, so it's not like he's he you know he was training through December. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I got Ron the chance Ireland. to meet Daniel, and he's it seems like he's training well at Loughborough. Um, you can go watch his practice with Felix Abach on our on our youtube channel if you would like uh i'm talking to him tomorrow so Yay. stay tuned for that one uh i think it's the 50 women's 50 fly though that record well they've all been around about the same time but women have been knocking on the door of it for quite a while and we <laughs> saw renomi last worlds at her last worlds go 24 5 i think she was about two tenths away Two girls went 24-6. I think because it's short course meters, people are going to just be swimming those events more. If America swam short course mo meters more, I would say it's the 200 breast because I wholeheartedly think Kate Douglas could break it if she swam it more than once every two years. <laughs> but because she doesn't, I, I do think that we're the women are inching closer and closer to that 50 fly, and it will get broken in the next but, two years. But you said inching takes a long time to get anywhere an inch at a time 
All right. Well, I think two tenths of a second is like what? I don't know. An inch, <laughs> two inches in a 50. I don't know. That's a couple of <laughs> a few. Yeah. Inches at least. Yeah. So I think a, f- a few more tries and, uh, and that record will go down. I think the 50 fly is going down soon, but it's going to be like a Renomi type. It's going to be basically somebody who accepts that they're not going to win more Olympic medals and they're going to, or Nicholas Santos is a great example. Um, or uh, mm-hmm. what's his face? The Ukrainian in the men's 50 fly. Um, Andre Gavrov. Gavrov. Yeah, it's going to be somebody who accepts that they're not going for Olympic medals anymore. And they just swim the short course 50 fly a hundred times a year until they get the record. <laughs> Um, if you're if you're two tenths away and you swim it often enough, you will eventually get it. Um, but I think that's going to take a while. I think that's going to take a few years for that to happen. Maybe maybe Sarah will do it. Or that's Maggie just continues. Living. 